Hey everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Zachary Ward. I am a structural and upper cervical chiropractor here in Albert Hills, Michigan. I have a practice called Life and Alignment Chiropractic. This is my phone number. I'll give you the website later. Uh, what I wanted to do for you today was put together just a everyday case, just a simple case, uh, just kind of a run-of-the-mill, uh, you know, average patient going through average changes uh, over time, and what that looked like. Um, for her uh, neck and her symptoms uh, and kind of show you some of the details. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to get into some of the nitty-gritty on what I'm looking at in terms of curvature and curvature changes. Um, and there will probably be a shortened version of this for YouTube. I'm sorry, an extended version of this to YouTube and a shortened version for uh, Facebook. So go ahead and uh, look for those if you will. So here's the idea behind what we're doing. The spine has an ideal shape. Uh, the spine is made of movable parts. It contains bones and ligaments and, and discs and where these all come together, these are called joints. And how these joints interact with each other affect the spinal cord, the spinal nerves, and the fluids of the spine. Um, probably the simpler way of putting this though is that really form does determine our function um, and how well a form designs is designed will affect how it functions, but not, not only how it's designed, but how it withstands uh, breakdown to deterioration over time will also affect the function. So everything that we do in terms of moving, thinking, breathing, staying upright against gravity, uh, protecting the spinal cord, all of those things that the, that, that the spine helps us do, um, that gets affected by uh, spinal breakdown over time. So we're going to look at what that looks like in one particular person. Uh, she's in her mid-30s. Uh, we're just going to call her a desk worker. Uh, she's a mom, wife, uh, spouse. She has chronic neck and shoulder tension, very, very common for a lot of people who work, you know, who live their life at a desk uh, during the day. Uh, she has headaches with computer work, uh, makes it very hard to concentrate sometimes. And uh, can you spot my typo? She frequently needs to get up and walk around at work uh, just due to the discomfort in sitting. So here we go. This is uh, her image on the left and her image on the right. Uh, these images are separated by just about a little over a month. Uh, we had the uh, Christmas and New Year holiday in between when she, when she got started and when I took the second image. So um, there's actually even fewer visits here probably than I would have made uh, for uh, somebody else uh, in that time frame. Uh, but nonetheless, we got a nice shift in a little over a month. Uh, you know, when we talk about shift, uh, in the neck in particular, and we talk about coming out of a reverse cervical curve or coming out of a straightened neck into a restoration of a curve, everybody likes to look at these really great dynamic shifts like this one. This is from my own practice from a few years ago, you know, where we have this uh, complete loss of cervical curve, the start of a reverse curve, uh, and then this kind of fully functional curve comes back, looks nice, it's beautiful, uh, great x-rays. Uh, this change is very obvious to see. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to happen like that in order for people to get better. Um, and so while this is like an ideal shift, uh, not everybody gets to have an ideal shift because of the changes that they've experienced in their neck already or ligament weakness or some other factor going on uh, in terms of their lifestyle. But we can still get change that we can measure and that shows an improvement uh, in their symptoms. So when we talk about a curve or a loss of curve or the start of a reverse curve, we're looking really at um, five different uh, things that can happen away from a normal curvature. So a normal curvature is going to be shown in this image here on the left. And this person here is um, looking towards the left side of the screen. So the nose is up here and the back of the skull is here. And that pattern goes all the way across. So this is the normal healthy cervical curve here. We call this lordotic. So when you look at this, it has a nice soft gentle curve forward like this. And this is your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh cervical vertebrae. And what begins to happen is kind of a, what you might call a stage, maybe a stage one of the first stage is a, uh, is a stru structural misalignments. Stress does get put onto the nervous system uh, in that process. And you start developing instead of a nice soft general curve forward, you have less of a general curve forward. There might be just a little bit of one, but the neck goes straightened. When it becomes a little bit more serious, this, this top part of the structure begins to collapse forward. And that's typically what happens to the human body. Like you never see a, an elderly person walking down the street with their, you know, bent over back, uh, backwards in terms of their, their bodies extended. Instead, you see them fully starting to break down forward. Same thing happens in the neck. Uh, so the neck begins to lose its curve like this. 
Um, this would be in a more extreme, what we call a kyphotic angulation. A little bit less version of that would be just kind of a normal kyphotic curve. We have the start of a reverse. Instead of being at, instead of that curve pointing this way, uh, it's now starting to turn back with the angle going over here. And we have two different uh, kind of complicated combinations. Uh, one is S-shaped, which goes like this. And the other one is the inverted S, which goes like this. Um, these two shapes are harder. I do work with people who have these kinds of reverse cervical curves. And typically it takes a little bit longer, it's a little bit more complicated uh, to get those unlocked. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom in here on what's going on with her. Image on the left is the before image. Image on the right is the after image. Um, you, you take a look at those just first glance. If you have an untrained eye, you're probably not going to be able to necessarily see the shift in the C2 or the change here. But if I put a line in here, a dot in the middle of the C2, the C3, and the C4, it should become apparent to you. You can also look at uh, those back red lines as well. You can start to see how that neck is uh, beginning to shift and to change. So then I've drawn in the angles for you, and this is where things start to get important. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in on this. If we're going to see a change, positive change, in a curve, what we're going to see is we're going to see this structure start to start to move into a position where it's going to start doing this. Okay, so what that means is that these bones on the top half, towards the middle, are going to start lifting up this way, and the bones on the bottom half are going to start moving down that way. That just makes sense. So it makes sense that we're going to start to see some of these angles increase and some of these angles decrease. Um, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. So the biggest shift in terms of the actual vertebrae shifting is going to be that second cervical vertebrae. So we're seeing a, a nice angular shift. So this goes from being 25 degrees down off the horizon to only 21.5. And there's very clear difference in where the position of the second cervical vertebrae is uh, versus the bottom. versus here, right, where that C2 is going forward. So moving on down the spine, we see a little bit of a less of a decrease in that angulation here. Then we get towards the C4 and the C5. Uh, we see something happen. Four staves exactly where it is, okay, in terms of its angle. And then in five, five starts to drop down. So instead of being 9.5, it drops down two degrees. And then at C6, we see the largest shift where we actually add a seven degree shift here where this starts to drop down like this and a little less so at C7, okay? So overall, even though at first glance, there's not gonna be a huge difference between the image on the left and the image on the right, what we do see is we do see 14 degrees total across, change, excuse me, across all segments. And so this is a pretty big shift for her, for her to go through uh, in just about a little over four weeks. Um, and uh, when we put the lines on there, when we put the angle measurements on there, uh, that's very clear that that has shifted. That's that start is that it is now coming out of the reverse. It's no longer reversed. It's still a kyphotic neck. Uh, it is still straight. But uh, instead of having this uh, start to have this kyphotic angulation where this is going forward, this is now coming back. Uh, and she's now in the position where uh, if, if things continue to improve over time, the middle of the neck is going to start moving this way. Uh, there's a few more things we could say about this neck, um, and I will get into it just briefly. Um, you're going to see some overlap of some joints back here. Um, and you're seeing that overlap uh, here uh, uh, because there's actually some ligament weakness. Uh, and one could say there's even a little bit of um, uh, what we call segmental instability in this neck. So it's not included in this video, but I do some do have some images of the neck bending this way and the neck bending that way. And we're actually seeing a lot of movement uh, between the C3, C4, and the C5, uh, suggesting that the ligaments that keep all this together at each level uh, do have uh, some damage to them. Uh, and that's something to consider as we're looking for a change in the structure, an improvement in the health of the cervical curve, uh, keeping that in mind. Um, so she may be, for lack of a better term, um, she may plateau right here for a while while her ligaments kind of do the stuff that they need to do to heal. 
uh, over several months before she can even start to move uh, in this direction. And that's just the reality of, of healing. Okay, again, Dr. Zachary Ward here. I'm in your upper left at uh, Life and Alignment Chiropractic. Uh, my uh, website is here, lachiro.com. You can go there to read more about this process. Uh, if you are local to my area, southeastern Michigan, Metro Detroit, 248-598-4002 is, uh, is, the, is the phone number to call if you want to get a hold of me um, or leave a message with my assistant. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can always use my contact form at lachiro.com. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you are looking for answers related uh, to what you think may be coming, symptoms coming from changes in your cervical curve, uh, you know, keep on looking. Uh, the answers are probably out there, and hopefully this has been uh, helpful for you in terms of coming to your own conclusions about the health of the, of the human spine and the structure and why it is important. Have a great day.